As oil and food dominate our lives, we will see a huge shift in perceived value. Paper promises will give away to physical assets. This will be generated as the elite try to print their way out of the crisis or simply try to rob every last dime of that ship that goes down. This paradigm shift will be a violent changing of society as people try to resist and then adapt to the new reality of more expensive food and energy. And if this sounds familiar, this is why. Your family will change, your job will change, your priorities and goals will change, your government and industries will change, things that will make you successful will change, and when you are aware of this, you can prepare for this. So we're starting to bring everything back together how we first started off. I start off with that shocking statement that the American middle class will be destroyed. This is why this is going to happen. When energy prices go up, food prices go up, and everything else becomes secondary. Debt becomes secondary. Bankruptcies, there will be run on banks, bailouts, inflation. Cars will be secondary. There will be no new car sales. Uh, people will fix the old ones or do without. Houses, larger homes will be abandoned or more generations will move in together, which is what I'm experiencing in my family. Consumer electronics, people just won't spend money on gadgets and gadgets as food and energy become much more intensive. Eating out, you know, I predict only high-end restaurants and, and low-end bars will survive. That whole middle-class America of chain restaurants, I don't think will make it. And charity, you know, the United States has always been a very giving nation, but when the times get tough, there's going to be less to go around. And the only thing that's going to be left for people to give to charity is time, and we're going to have plenty of it. And that's going to help change our society for the better, I hope. And believe it or not, we're going to have even more massive job layoffs. And only essential jobs will be valued. Think about all these highly specialized jobs that the economy has developed. I mean, we have you know, all these different levels of corporations that are around. And, you know, I'm constantly amazed at, you know, what people uh, do for jobs and, and how, you know, these little niches form. And think about the job that you have. Oil prices do go up dramatically. It's now starting to become more of a, you know, more basic life. How, uh, how valuable is your job to the, the people around you? You know, if you're doing frivolous type work, like, you know, I don't even want to name things, but if, you know, if you feel like your job is more frivolous or, or not a basic function of society, chances are you're about, you know, you're going to lose your job. During a hyperinflation, food and energy will take up nearly 90% of the average man's budget. This is a historical fact. I've looked through a lot of books. Uh, David Hackett Fisher did a huge study on this called The Great Wave. And over and over again, when these hyperinflations happen, 90% of what people take in, it's literally living hand to mouth. And this will be especially harder for people who live in colder areas of the country. So this is probably the most modern example of uh, Zimbabwe's hyperinflation. And you can see the exchange of paper money to real goods. So this guy has literally billions of dollars for a loaf of bread or three eggs for $100 billion or a box of bananas for a whole row of this funny money. Uh, there's intrinsically at the very bottom, no different from Zimbabwe's dollar from any other fiat currency. It is a paper promise backed by the full faith of a government. And when the government reaches their end, this is what happens. 